Hello, my name is Sam Rhodes and I work in the employability and skills team at East Sussex County Council as a project officer. One of my jobs is to collate and disseminate labour market information or LMI as we call it and I do this in a couple of ways. Uh, every month I send out an LMI bulletin to local schools and colleges and also to agencies in the county who are helping uh, young people and adults get, um, get into work. Another way I present this information is by, is by doing the occasional presentation and I did the first one back in June 2020 um, when we were just coming out of lockdown and the effects were first being felt on the economy and I was asked to present um, to a conference of careers leads and, and other empl employability staff to the county and now talking in October 2020 I've been asked to do a similar presentation with updated statistics. So I've got about 20 slides to show you. Uh, each one of them is packed full of information, but don't worry, I'm not gonna read through all of them. I'm just gonna pick out one or two key points. And then if you're watching this back on a recording, you can pause and take whatever data you need in your own time. Right, uh, before we get into the statistics, just to put our county East Sussex into context, uh, I just wanna pick out a couple of points from this slide. Uh, firstly, there you can see there the population of 557,000, as, as noted on the top left-hand side of your screen. And if you look at the bottom there, you can see that within that population, we have 75,000 millennials, which is about 25% fewer than the national average. And this point gets reinforced, if you look on the right-hand side, that the number of people retiring is, is quite very large, it's over 260,000. And these statistics were taken just before COVID and were showing that the county was actually suffering from a skill shortage. And this was being reflected in a number of vacancies being unfilled. Another point I want to show you are the averages, uh, average wages. If you look on the top right hand um, of your screen, you can see that East Sussex average wage is 30,600. And this is about 4,000 fewer then the national average of 34,000. And of course, within East Sussex, this varies as well, because Hastings and Rother has an average salary of about 24 to 26,000 per annum. Where, and this rises further west you go within the county to rates of over 30,000 when you get to across to Lewis and Brighton. Finally, on this slide, you can just see there in the middle, the top four industries in, in this county are hospital activities, retail, accommodation, and education. And those four sectors are added to others to make the top 10 for this county. Now, this slide was collated before COVID and, you, and no doubt these sectors have changed considerably. For example, the first one, human health and social welfare, it, it was top then, but it's also, it, its proportion has grown considerably because there's been a number of recruitment campaigns to get more people into this sector to cope with the pandemic and they have taken a lot of staff who have had got a related customer service, customer care skills from other sectors, particularly those sectors which have been badly hit by the pandemic and lockdown, such as accommodation and food service, which you can see third one down, and that has no doubt shrunk. Okay, I'm now going to move into the slides, um, showing you some updated statistics. Um, showing the effect of the pandemic and lockdown upon the national and local economy. So um, just a couple of key points from each of the sections. First of all, you can see at the unemployment and the, and the point to bring out there is that the number of people um, claiming universal credit and JSA because they are unemployed has now reached 20,365 and that's double the number of people who were claiming back in March. So that's double in just six months. Underneath that, you can see um, within that profile, you've got 18 to 24 year olds who the proportion is 11.3% of them are now claiming um, such benefit. And that's three times higher than the number who were claiming back in March. Employment support, or more commonly known as the furlough scheme. Um, this statistic is correct up to the end of July of 100,000 people either claiming either furlough or the, or the self-employment income support scheme. Um, and I think no doubt this has gone down as more people have returned to work. So a more up to date statistic would probably be about 25,000 fewer than this number, but still obviously very high. And then job postings, um, I've got a, 
a slide to show you how, how the number of vacancies have been affected by the pandemic and lockdown. OK, the first slide I want to show you are how the claimant rates in East Sussex compares to national and regional rates. And you can see how there are areas in East Sussex which are higher than the national rates of 6.6%. And the other point to bring out is just, how, just look how uh, across all areas and, and national and local, it's how much higher than they are um, to the similar period in September last year. Similarly, I want to show you how the unemployment rate amongst 18 to 25 year olds in East Sussex compares to national and regional statistics. And again, you can see that it's in many, many areas of East Sussex is, is higher than the national rate and particularly high as it was in the previous screen in Hastings. Um, this slide um, reinforces the, um, the concern we have for the number of people aged 18 to 24 who are unemployed. You can see on the left hand side of that graph that even in normal economic times that this age group 18 to 24 always have a higher unemployment rate and it's noticeable that in times of economic crisis such as now and, and back in 2008 to 2010 when we had the financial crash how uh, the proportion of unemployed amongst this group is always much higher than the other groups if you're wondering why we focus on this age group it's because a lot of research has shown that there is a scarring effect if young people suffer periods of unemployment um, during this time, they are more likely to suffer periods of unemployment for the rest of their lives, miss out on training and qualifications and, and suffer lower income. So it's particularly important that um, policy action to support the economy is, is targeted even more so at this particular age group. Um, and if the situation couldn't be worse for 18 to 24 year olds, then um, um, another negative effect is the fact that a lot of employers um, have been reported by the Department of Education that they won't be taking on the same number of apprentices that they did last year. In fact, there's a scheduled fall of about 46%. Um, a couple of slides now to show you the job support scheme or as, as, as more commonly known as the furlough scheme and this slide just to just to show you that in East Sussex the number of people either on job support which is furlough or uh, self-employment income support plus benefits such as universal credit and JSA is, is nearly 50 percent of the working age population in East Sussex. This slide is just to show you um, the changes that are happening in, in uh, for job support and this slide is really just giving you an overview if you're working in an organization that has to give detailed information um, to people who, are, who who want to know what changes are going on for furlough or self-employment income support now then please do send them to the government.uk website in brief on the left hand side you can see what changes are happening there to furlough the top bar is what it is up to October the 31st and then the next two bars you can see are either for the job support scheme as it'll feature in, in the tier three areas and then as it'll feature for all industries we can, which, can, which can show that they've been affected by uh, various restrictions. The right hand side gives you the detail about the changes to be made to the self-employment income support. OK, this slide just shows you what's been happening to the numbers of vacancies and you can see they're both on the left hand side for national and the right hand side for East Sussex, which actually mirror each other. You can see there up until April, May, um, a slight slight rise was going on from the financial crash from, to, from 2010 up until May, June of this year. And then suddenly huge fall. Um, up until, until August but thankfully both nationally and locally in East Sussex there has been a, a slow recovery and the numbers of vacancies are slow, slowly rising. So what is the government hoping to do to, to try and alleviate um, all the negativity brought on by the pandemic and lockdown? Well the government came out in July with its plan for jobs and 
on this table, this summarises all the different schemes that, that the government are implementing. The, the top area coloured in purple, traineeships, kickstart apprenticeships and industry play, placements um, are all mainly aimed at that 18 to 25 year old group. In fact, 16 to 25 year old group. Of course, apprenticeships are open to people of any age. But obviously, the vast majority are the younger, are the younger profile. And you can see there on, on, the, on those right hand columns, all the different areas of incentives for employers to, to encourage them to take on people from this age group. At the bottom of that table, in coloured in the light green, are the sector based work academies. This particular model, um, for example, at a, a local FE college like East Sussex College Group, can provide fast track training of three to four weeks um, for people who want to um, pick up introductory skills to get them into a different sector and so you've you've seen sector-based work academies um, happening um, in care work retail Um, and we've got one scheduled in October for construction and in November for railway engineering. And these academies, as I say, fast track training, employers come in, give introductory employability skills, and it also includes placements. Locally, um, East Sussex County Council, through its team, through the Team East Sussex Consortium, which is made up of senior managers, and senior employers in the county have been working through the summer on an economic recovery plan called East Sussex Reset. Now, this recovery plan is made up of six missions. All of them are related to labour market support, but the, the mission that we're most interested in is mission two, which is building skills and creating jobs. And this mission will be very much about helping employers become aware and implementing the previous plan for jobs and all those incentive schemes to try and make ensure that recruitment, training and qualifications are maintained in the county. If you want fuller details of this plan, um, you can see there the East Sussex Reset coloured in green at the bottom of, of those missions, and that is a hyperlink which will take you to the report. So just to summarise the labour market, um, you can see that it's, it, it's very much a sector based um, issue with certain sectors either still doing OK, one in particular that has grown off of the, that's the health and social care, but sadly a couple of sectors like the visitor economy, um, creative arts and entertainment suffering very badly. That last point about mass reallocations, this is where early in the pandemic and lockdown, um, policy commentators were saying that hopefully a number of people who have been laid off by badly hit sectors will be able to transfer easily into sectors that still needed people. Well, that has happened to some extent. You've, you've, as I said before earlier in the presentation, you've had people with um, customer service skills being able to transfer into, into care work through fast track training um, because they have those related skills. But obviously, not to the extent that it's going to solve the whole problem and, and and that's why the plan for jobs with its targeted areas of support schemes um, such as financial enc encouragement for employers to take on apprentices etc will will need to happen for over the next couple of years just a couple of slides now showing you the the key sectors that are, that are still been recruiting over these last few months care retail delivery work or mail uh, the local government and public sector, warehouses, funeral care, financial services. And in more, for more detail here, I decided to go to the MG database. Now, this particular uh, database is a job aggregator. And what it does, it pulls down vacancies from all the job boards that are out there in the UK and, and shows us collated information about what's going on in the vacancy market. And so I, just, I looked at jobs for in the mid-range skills standard occupation classification four to six just to get an idea of, of what vacancies uh, are still being advertised and which are the most popular ones and you can see here the top 20. I don't think there are any great surprises um, obviously in the first 
in the top 10, you can see a lot of jobs in the, in the health and social welfare. Um, but it is encouraging to see that at number five, you've got chefs and number 19, you've got sous chefs. And, um, and, and these jobs are from sectors that have been extreme, from the sector of food service, which has been extremely badly hit. And, but they have gone down. I mean, these, these vacant, these particular roles um, often featured in second or third place in, in various top 10 or top 20 vacancy lists, but it's, they're still hanging in there. Um, as I say, I work closely with the East Sussex Careers Hub and they've been doing a, a number of activities in a different way to maintain um, career support to local schools and colleges. First of all, um, next week on 4th of November, there's a, a Learn Live um, transition event for year 11 pupils where they'll be able to ask questions related to future choices. And if you're seeing this after November the 4th, and hopefully there'll be a recording of that. Uh, if I just pick another one there, employ videos. This is where obviously work experience and, and workplace visits under the banner of open doors haven't been able to happen in the same way because of social distancing. But instead, a number of employers have allowed us to go in and, and, give, and take little films uh, featuring employers undertaking duties or showing a day in the life of, also some talking head interviews where they're telling us about their, the rewards and challenges of their particular roles. These little roles, um, these little films will be going out on our YouTube channel and also being shown in schools. And obviously it doesn't replace the real thing, but it does give pupils and students an idea of what's going on in the world of work. Um, over the last year, we've been developing a new website, the Careers East Sussex website, which a careers website pack full of information on, on courses and apprenticeships uh, aimed not just at young people in schools and colleges, but also to adults. So what, what impact is, is what's going on going to have on career planning? Well, obviously, one of the main areas we feel is that, you know, is to look at that third bullet point down where the first choice career may not be available yet. But there are some jobs to apply for, and this is what we say. Is, so, you know, people need to have a plan B where they can get a job, get some transferable skills. And then in a year or two's time, when hopefully the economy starts to get back to what it was, uh, then go back to plan A, where it might have been um, a particular job in a sector where they, where they wanted, which is not recruiting at the moment, or to an apprenticeship, which is not, the opportunity is not available at the moment. Um, but if you want to keep up to date, with local opportunities, um, as I've mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I send out um, an LMI bulletin which can, contains information on apprenticeships on, and on companies which, which are recruiting. And here's a page of the latest bulletin that I sent out in October. So, for example, at the top there, you can see organisations which are advertising apprenticeships, ITV, um, some information about uh, the new T levels that are coming out. And a couple of, and at the bottom of the screen there, again, some more examples of organisations which are recruiting as Tesco in the retail and HS2 in, in building and railway engineering and civil engineering sector. So that's the end of the presentation. And I'll just to remind you, if you want any more information related to LMI, either because you want to receive the bulletin monthly or you just want some specific questions answered, then please do get in touch with me um, at sam.roads at eastsussex.gov.uk. I'll be very happy to provide you either with the monthly bulletin if you want to subscribe or with any information. Thank you very much.